Hello and welcome. My name is Professor Joe Goldblatt. I am the treasurer of the Edinburgh Interfaith Association in Edinburgh, Scotland. The Edinburgh Interfaith Association people of all and no faiths together for over 30 years to help promote understanding, tolerance, peace, and love for one another. This program today is part of that effort as we bring together the director of the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum in Shanghai, China, and school pupils from Edinburgh, Scotland, and Rwanda to learn about the history of Jewish refugees in Shanghai, China during World War II and the important work that the museum is doing to preserve this important story. This program is part of the Edinburgh Interfaith Association annual Holocaust Remembrance Week commemorations. Our guest speaker is the director of the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum, and he has led the recent successful renovation and expansion of this important international historical center. I am therefore very pleased to welcome the director of the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum, Mr. Chen. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. We are. It's very glad to see you. After the expansion, the size of this museum has moved from 1,000 square meters to 4,000 square kilometers. 4,000 meters. In our museum, you can see how the Jewish refugees came to Shanghai, how they lived in Shanghai, and how they left Shanghai after, which you can see in our slide. Over the years, we had held uh, a tour exhibitions all over the world and also all over Shanghai, uh, China. And now we have over 1,000 exhibits in the museum. And now the museum has applied lots of advanced technology such as the inter interreactive uh, smart screens and also we the printer printings to print lots of objects that were not available before. Uh, the museum now it's based on the civilian houses which were which uh, Jewish refugees in Shanghai used to live. And these are the photos of the old museum before the renovations. And so far, we have visitors such as the Israeli uh, Consul General in Shanghai and also the American Consul General, uh, the German, and also Polish and Austrian General who also pay visit to the museum. Uh, maybe you want to move to uh, next pages, and this is this is still our the, the old museum. And in the next few pages, you can see the new one. 那么我们这个纪念馆讲述这段历史，我们是就是就是在我们设置这个文案的时候，就是在我们设置展览的时候，我们是非常。重视国外学者对这段历史的观点，那么也包括去年我们举行会的时候，教授提供给我们的观点。And when we were designing the museum, uh, we valued uh, all the opinions, especially opinions from foreign guests, such as professor, and we valued your suggestions to us. You gave us last year. 他是我们咨询委员会的那个副主席，他的意见对我们来说也非常重要。教授意见对我们来说也是非常重要。Professor Ghost, uh, Ghost Blatt, 
a member of our international advisory committee, and your opinion is very important to us. We are very excited that after the pandemic ended, Dr. Li and 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 Dr. Li It is our hope that after the COVID nineteen, and everyone can come to the museum and see for themselves. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Chen, for that very informative and inspiring presentation today. Mr. Chen is joined today by school pupils in both Scotland and Rwanda. I am pleased to welcome from. Trinity Academy, Patrick Hayes and Nina Bell, who are all senior six students. I'm also pleased to welcome from Agozo Shalom School in Rwanda, which was founded by the great Jewish philanthropist Anne Heyman. Heyman learned during a visit to the Tufts University Jewish Student Center in 2005 about children who were left without parents. By the Rwandan genocide, she was inspired to do something to help, and by her Jewish beliefs of tikkun olam to save the world, Heyman establishing a youth village for the orphans, modeled on Yemen Ord, the Israeli village for young people set up for children who survived the Holocaust in the new nation of Israel. The word agozo literally comes from the local expression. For drying tears, drying tears, and now I believe that the students have some questions for our friend Mr. Chen in Shanghai at the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum. Ruth, would you like to go first, please, with the first question? Speaker. The theme for Holocaust Memorial Day for 2020. In the darkness, it encourages everyone to reflect on the depths of American safety, but also the ways that can resist that darkness to be the light. In what way do you think the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum might be a good example of being the light in the darkness? In the world, there is a constant struggle against the violence, and there is a constant struggle against the oppression. 那么在这样的情况下，我们要引导人们向善、向光明、向积极。那么上上海犹太难民纪念馆就是讲，在大屠杀这最黑暗的时期，中国人民和犹太民族互相帮，一起克服困难，争取和平，是讲这么一个故事的。所以说，这段历史故事在今天。仍然具有现实的意义，所以说我们要扩建这个纪念馆，让更多的人能够来我们这纪念馆了解这段历史，通过这段历史得到一些启发。We think that this story is still very educational today, uh, to us because we still need to talk, teach people how to help, offer help to each other, and then we overcome difficulties together. Thank you, and Ruth. Thank you for that question, because as you know from studying about the Jews of Shanghai, China, during World War II, no country in Europe would accept Jews as refugees. None. The only two countries in the world were the Dominican Republic and China, and so sometimes you have to be the first. You have to raise your head above the parapet and be courageous. I wonder if Ninette has a question for Mr. Chen from Rwanda. Yes. Good morning once again. Thank you very much for your amazing presentation. I'm very uh, in, uh, pleased to ask you a question. Can you uh, what it takes to have that great heart to, uh, that Shanghai Refugee Museum, as Shanghai did? What does it take to have that good heart of helping and also welcoming whoever is in danger to give them a, a home or shelter or a place where they can rest and and survive and survive in? 
Thank you. So why did the Shanghai people rescue the Jews? Why did they rescue the Jews? Uh, first, we want to say that Luanda is the country that successfully solved the problem of discrimination and also, uh, between two uh, ethnic groups. We, are, we admire that. And why we helped those Jewish refugees, and here is my opinion. There is no religious and cultural conflict between the Jewish and the Chinese nation. The at that time, the Chinese people were also in the time of wars, but we, it is important for us to help the Jews who are in better who are in need more than us. 當然,猶太民族能夠這些猶太難民能夠在上海得到善待,也因為他們給上海帶來了多元文化。And they also the Jewish refugees, they also help our fight. For example, some of them joined the Chinese army in our wars against uh, the Japanese. 所以說這個歷史故事給了我們一個很好的啟發。Thank you. And the Jews also, Ninette, were highly educated. They were doctors, they were solicitors, lawyers, they were nurses, accountants, they were business people, and they made great contributions to the Chinese people and to their country. And so they were most welcome as refugees and contributing citizens of this country. And now, Patrick, I'd like to next question, Patrick Hayes. What do you think we can do as individuals to be a light and do our part to prevent genocides and hate crimes happening today? What can we do to prevent genocides and future Holocaust? So, we First, we need to understand uh, the cruelty of Holocaust and his and the negative impact on our life. So, Besides our museum, the Yavashin Museum in Jerusalem, and also the Holocaust Museum and Jewish Museum in Berlin, in Washington, they are all, we all need to go to these places to better know the history and learn from them. And the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum, um, uh, in, the, in this museum, we know that uh, even in hard times, we should always help each other. Uh, Yes, we should all work together, help together uh, against the war and then fight for the peace. Wonderful. And the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum is a sterling example of that kind of philosophy. 
Ishmael, if I could now return to Rwanda and let you ask the next question, please. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. And uh, before I tell you my question, thank you for good presentation. And um, so according to the history, we've seen Adolf Hitler hoping that all the Jews in the Shanghai, all the Jews who were living in the Shanghai were going to be killed. And he was having this hope because he was going to be supported by the Japanese. But we have seen that according to history, the Jews in the Shanghai were well rescued. And as we have said, about 20,000 of the Jews who were in the Shanghai, many of them were rescued. So we want to know behind reasons, behind reasons why the Jews were not killed at the end of the day. So the question is, why were the Jews in Shanghai not killed at the end of the day by the Japanese or by the Germans? The most important one is the Japanese policy. Actually, there is two there were two ideas inside Japan. One idea is they thought the Jews were useless. And the other one is that they could be the Jews could be useful to Japan and the Japanese economy. These two ideas were actually struggling with each other. Very interesting. Our final question today is from a student at Trinity Academy. Nina, we'll let you have the final question today, please. Um, what message would you like us to deliver to our fellow students? So what method would Mr. Chen and the museum like to deliver to the students in Rwanda, in Edinburgh, Scotland, and throughout the world? What's the key message of the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum, please? Today, uh, there is a press journalist who asked me that uh, now we are in the we are in the times of peace, but is it still meaningful to remember this history? We should always be alert about what had happened so we can prevent what might happen. The tragedies that had ever happened to Jews, it could have it could happen to other nations, other peoples in the future. Only by remembering them and be alert, why would they happen? So we could try to prevent it from happening again. So we should the mankind and also uh, especially the younger generation have to, we should always teach them about the Holocaust. We should always teach them about the Holocaust. We should always teach Thank you. Wonderful. May I please thank you, Mr. Good Chen, choice. for such an informative and inspiring response to our students' very insightful questions. 
students, you and your teachers, Louise Dorman and Dorwood and Jean-Claude are to be commended for their excellent teaching of you to ask such deep Absolutely. and insightful questions. Before I hand over the program to Ian Stewart, I would like to just say that how proud I am to serve as a vice chairman of the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum with Mr. Andre Korsov, the director of education for Auschwitz Museum and Memorial in Poland. Yesterday, we had the privilege of interviewing Andre Korsak, and we found that one of the most important lessons to learn of the Holocaust and indeed of the Shanghai Jewish experience is how important it is throughout our lives to show human kindness by welcoming the other. We struggle in Europe and around the world with the challenge and the issue of more and more refugees seeking asylum. It's very important for us to remember the lessons that we've learned today from the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum. And now Ian, our executive director of the Edinburgh Interfaith Association, is going to lead a brief further discussion with our students to see what we learned today. So over to you, Ian. Thank you, Joe. Just before we, we come to that, I know Nanette was, was desperate to ask one final question. Would that be okay? Surely. Nanette, um, would you like to ask your, your final question just before we, we move on? Thank you for your time, uh, um, our guests. Uh, what will the Hangai Refugee Museum, what will the Hangai uh, Shanghai Refugee Museum offer to students to help us become better informed citizens about the Holocaust and also human rights? Thank you. Good question. 我们在今年关心的酷建了以后呢，我们也在考虑，就是让更多的孩子来我们这里参观这个方案。那么我们现在呢，就是一个是要和教育部门进行合作，让他们能够更多的来这里参观。好，你说。Uh, after the expansion, we are thinking about uh, letting more kids come to the museums. And now we are working with the government to, on this project. So hopefully it will work. And we are now designing different classes because we have to target different age groups of students. Maybe they're uh, like kids from elementary school and maybe they are from the middle school. And they're also like, there was also foreign students coming to the museum. So we need to uh, multiply our options. 第三呢，我们要进行更多的那个艺术创作，比如说那个戏剧啊、文学作品啊等等，让这些孩子呢能够通过不同的形式来了解这段历史。And we are also designing art events, allowing the kids to uh, engage in this experience in different kinds, for example, uh, in different uh, forms. For example, drama and also lectures, drawing, paintings, photographies. Actually, we are now in a lecture uh, we room we are in now is also a lecture room and also a small room for exhibitions. So in this room, we can arrange different kinds of activities to allow the kids to come join us. Uh, now the uh, the pictures you're looking you can see from here. Uh, actually, now we are having an exhibition of a uh, photograph of Israeli sceneries. 
，呃，这些作品都是中国的摄影师们拍出来的。Uh, these were uh, these are worked by Chinese phot uh, photographers who travel to Israel and fall uh fall in love with the local landscape. 那么我们呢也对我们纪念馆是进行了研究，就是我们应该从哪些角度来讲好这段历史。And we are also working on different narratives and how to tell the story of Jewish refugees in Shanghai. 第一，我们要告诉孩子，这是一个关于和平和友善的故事。First, we will tell the children that this is a story about peace and friendship of mankind. 第二呢，我们要告诉孩子，这是一个关于开放和包容的故事。And this is also a story about opening our arms and also welcoming others. 第三呢，我们告诉孩子，这是一个关于国际主义的故事。This is a story about internationalism. 第四呢，我们告诉孩子，这是一个关于民族文化传承的故事。And this is also about passing on the national cultures. 第五，我们告诉孩子们，这是一个关于感恩的故事。And this is also about thanking others, gratitude. 我们还在继续研究这个故事，还能给我们什么启发？ And we are also working on the story and this history. Hopefully, we can have more inspirations from it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that very inspiring uh, talk and and little window into the Shanghai Holocaust Museum. And now I'm I'm going to really reverse the questions some of the students gave to the museum uh, uh, and put to them. Um, when we think of the Holocaust, we think of humanity in its darkest hour, uh, when over six million Jewish people were, were murdered along with other groups, including members of LGBTQI and disabled people and Roma and others. And today we are reminded that in the darkest hour, there are great acts of bravery and compassion by others who reach out to help others, often putting their own lives at risk. Yeah. And, and today we have heard the positive story of the 20,000 Jews who were offered refuge in China. And as I think the Trinity students mentioned earlier, the theme of Holocaust Memorial Day next year is be the light in the darkness. Um, and that really encourages us to reflect that in its darkest time, there are ways that individuals and communities can resist the darkness and be a light to others. So my, my first question that I'm going to put to, to, to students is, in what way do you think the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum could be a good example of being the light in the darkness? So you ask that question, I'm reversing that question to you. Let me start with Ruth. Let them translate. <laughs> so Ruth, I'm asking you the question, can you think, and why do you think the Shanghai, the story of, of the Shanghai Museum, may be a good example of, of, of being the light in the darkness? Uh, I think that the museum provides hope and it shows how, uh, how we can keep this going in the relevant day. And this is a peaceful time, and, but it's important to keep this in our memory and to show that how even when it, cause it, even when it is dark, there will still be hope. Although, Lynette, um, what, what positive message do you think you will take away from, from listening to this talk today, Lynette? Thank you. The lessons uh, I learned today, uh, it's being responsible citizens by uh, being tolerant and loving so that we can fight against discrimination, which leads us to genocide in general. Very good, very good, very, very well summed up. Um, and uh, Patrick, I'm, I'm wondering what what kind of message could you give to fellow students if they were asking you about this story? Is there, is there a message, do you think? I think a lot of it just does surround hope. And I think it's a story that hasn't been told enough because there's a lot of focus, especially with things like the Holocaust and the atrocities that happened, but I don't think really take enough time to look at 
the more positive aspects of uh, these sort of issues where we did have countries like China, thousands of refugees, and it shows that humanity has two sides. And although that there can be some horrible dark hours, there's always still people who are willing to try and make the world a better place. That's great. I wonder, Ish Ishmael, what do you, what do you think? What, what um, message do you think, Ishmael, you might take from this for your fellow students? In Agozo. Yes. Uh, the best message I can give to my fellows, there are, it is not one message actually, there are many messages, but maybe the two of them I can choose. I can tell them to be, first of all, light in the darkness. And the second one, I can tell them to be, uh, to have humanity in them. I mean, being humans before being anything else, before being a black, before being a woman. Yeah. They, they, they need to be fighting against the discrimination or segregation so that we can't see any genocide or any Holocaust happening again in the planet. Thank you very, very much, Ismail. Um, and, and Nina, we were asking earlier questions about how the, the Shanghai Museum might be a light. But I'm asking you the same question. How might you, as, you know, as a young person, be a light in the darkness? What, what, can, what can we do? What can we do individually? And, and not to be passive and to keep positive and just to keep take their courage and look forward with it. Okay, so not to be passive and, 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 and to, to challenge things, yeah. Um, I'm wondering from our students in, 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 in Agozo Shalom, you've been with us the last two days. Um, what, what, what have you gained from, what have you learned from the last two days, Nanette? Yeah, thank you. I learned a lot. I learned uh, the importance of learning oral costs and also the, the dangers that oral costs demonstrate so that we can fight against oral costs to happen again. And I also um, learned to be, a, as I say, to be responsible citizens, to uh, raise up my voice and never to relent uh, the symptoms that shows that uh, in the future, oral costs and genocide may happen again. That's, uh, that's what I took as a takeaway that I'll share to my fellow students at Gahozo Shalom, that we have a bond our founder and Heyman did. Whenever uh, there is uh, victims of maybe uh, genocide or Holocaust, we should raise up as the wall to help them. I personally, you, we should help them without uh, the country that you're coming from or the rest that you're coming from we shall have that great heart to help them and also uh, bring back the light in their dark to the bright future. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Very well put. Um, do you have any other final points or questions? No? Um, well, I'd like to thank um, Mr. Cheng and, and, and the students for their, their excellent questions and their, their excellent answers. Um, and um, I'm hoping that some of you will also be able to join us on January the 25th when we will be uh, having an interview with a uh, Holocaust survivor, uh, Inga Orkbacher, which, which will be fantastic uh, and, and a real um, privilege for us to do that. So thank you everyone on behalf of the Interfaith Association. Um, it's been very inspiring. Great, may I just please, may I please also add thanks for Kira, who's been our interpreter today. Of course, Thank Kira. you for your excellent interpreters. And also to Dr. Chris Wong of Shanghai, China, who helped arrange this interview with Mr. Chen. Mr. Chen, may the Shanghai Jewish Refugee Museum, like the Jewish, the Rwandan, and the Scottish people, continue to grow from strength to strength. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.